My name is Mike Palmer. I'm from ACDN. ACDN is a, well, we provide a workforce management platform uh, in the aged community and in disability space, as well as outside of aged care under the brand Sure Comply. Like aged care, many industries these days are struggling to attract, engage, and retain. There are similar characteristics that we think again and again, such as growth of the mobile workforce. Workers are frequently technicians who are on the tools, not sitting in front of a computer. English as a second language, a fair, fair number of people with that. Mix of generations means you've got uh, all different levels of IT literacy, from none to uh, the digital generation. And management has frequently come off the floor. So they're technical or clinical people, just now sitting in an admin or management role. All of which create challenges in their quest to attract engage and retain the best workforce possible. So we were designed to work with providers in this space to support them in workforce management. We do that with cutting edge technology. Our CTO is 25 years old. The infrastructure we operate works on a level that most do not, including some of our workforce management tech partners in our marketplace. We have to assist them in modernizing some of their pieces especially around connectivity. The humble CV. We've all used one at some stage in our careers. They have served a purpose, providing an overview of our education and employment in an easy to create and easy to read format. The problem is that they are unreliable true overview of a person. The flowery mission statements, I want to be the best employee ever. Exaggerations of the truth, a little or a lot. On employment, the receptionist role listed as director of first impressions. And uh, people who actually haven't done a, an MBA at Harvard. CVs also don't cover a wide range of other important areas, such as creative thinker, leadership potential, friendly disposition, clear and understandable voice, problem solving abilities. Do they fit into our culture? and level of IT literacy. So even if we're being 100% honest in our education and employment history, the traditional CV form still will not present a true overview of a candidate. So it is up to you, the Harry manager, with 200 applications for the one position, to digest the mountain of CVs and make a decision. Now more and more people are including LinkedIn in their recruitment system. Even though a recruiter can gain more insight, many of the same challenges as a CV may. Though the connections on LinkedIn create more of a picture, the record is still majority filled in by the individual. Even if the previous employees listed are true, it does not mean that the roles and responsibilities listed are, let alone the time taken by a manager to review the LinkedIn page of each applicant on top of their CV. And ultimately, like a CV, Anything that is negative ourselves on LinkedIn, we can simply remove. Even though LinkedIn is not the silver bullet, it is part of a definite move away from the traditional CV and the greater use of technology. Technology allows us to draw in information about candidates in order to create a much more rounded picture. Technology is reshaping how we hire. Though as with most things, not all technology is born equal. So today's webinar will show you not only some platforms with powerful functionality, but how connectivity takes that to a whole new level. Technology itself is not a solution. It is an enabler. The base desires of recruiters all over the world remain. Aiming to save time, think management time, speed to the new work being effective, lower costs, been getting it right the first time, thus lowering turnover of new staff. And lower risk, again, getting it right. People who not only have the skills you seek, but will fit in with your culture. Let's look at the traditional recruitment steps. You advertise directly into the usual suspects, newspapers, seek, career one, etc. Candidates respond via email to the poor person whose email address was listed in the ad. The CVs come as a that need to be downloaded. 
and they're all in different formats. So hard to read quickly looking for the key attributes you seek. Depending upon the number of applications, this process could potentially tie up a manager on an $80,000 to $120,000 salary for days. And in the end, they make a gut call based on the unverified information presented to them as to who they call in for an interview. The only information readily available to the interviewer is the contents of the CV. So half the face-to-face -face interview is trying to get information to fill in the gaps. What are they hiding? Is there anything they haven't listed in their CV that we are seeking, like languages? Will they fit our on-site culture? Overall, do they fit our needs or not? And once a decision has been made and a job offer accepted, the onboarding process begins. Based on their CV and paper-based forms, a personnel record is created, either in paper or manually set up in some kind of human resource information system. The process is then replicated to set them up in the other key workforce management systems, payroll, rostering, etc as well as creating logins to client management system. Overall, a very manual process that is time intensive and still ends up being the best cut call the email yeah. can make. We're now going to change gears and I want to introduce you to the first game changer, One Passport. One Passport is a universal workforce tracker. It works like a personnel record, same as you keep on each employee, except it is owned by the employee. They can enter information throughout their career, not losing anything along the way. The employee can share the one password with their employers as they progress their career. In fact, they can share it with multiple employers at one time. Helpful in today's world of part time and casual employment. The key difference here is anything else out there is that the one password system shares information between parties. Obviously, privacy permission must be given. But it means that the one passport record is maintained by both the employee who owns the record and by their employer. The system allows authorised parties to write to the one passport record. Not only employers, but also other related services. For example, when an employer lists an employee in their HR system, the HR system automatically sends a message stating the role, the name of the employer, and the start and end dates of employment to the one passport. Similarly, a training provider can send data from their student management system, stating the name of the qualification, the name of the education provider, and the start and end dates of the course. Likewise, compliance providers can send through their information, such as police checks. As the information from an employer, education provider, and compliance provider is generated by them and not the individual, it is verified data. One Passport provides a platform for an individual to track not only their inf information, but to track verified evidence of each step of their career. One Passport provides a platform for employers to access verified information from multiple sources about their candidates and current employees. One Passport tracks the different areas of one's career contact details, education, employment, compliance, skills, etc. An employee can update their email address here and each of their employees can be updated automatically and in real time. They complete some industry training at one of their employers and you can see it. And thus potentially not have to re-deliver it to them as you know they've done it and you have the evidence. Same for the police check. In aged care we have the three year clock on police checks. But if one of your staff, as they commence employment for another employer, gets a new police check, through one passport, you will receive it as well. And not just a copy, a full version. So your three year clock keeps getting reset. All items that expire have alerts on them that notify both the individual and the employers. From a recruitment viewpoint, there are a number of benefits. Firstly, you can request that all job applicant applications come into one passport system. It is free to individuals. No more CV PDFs. If they can't be bothered, you've just culled a group who would probably not have the right attitude for your workplace. Second, 
One password is easily keyword searchable. Makes it easier for scanning applications. Third, some of, and a growing percentage each year, of the data is verified. And when you employ them and add that verified information to their one passport, you increase that percentage. Fourth, though there are no comments from employers allowed, their listed employment history tells a story. Are they long-term people? Or do they never complete the trial period? Five, as the one password collects information from various sources, it frequently includes little things that might get left off sometimes, like languages or a particular skill, potentially filling a gap in your current team. Six, especially for smaller providers, if you can see that this person works down the road at a large quality provider with a great annual mandatory training system, you can piggyback off a lot of what they are delivering saving yourself time and costs. Seven, if you want to employ this individual, you can import their one password and set up the HR record automatically, for saving time on manual data entry. Eight, because of the connection to the system we'll create with the, between the workforce management set up and their one password, you will continue to be updated by the system as long as this person works for you lowering your annual compliance work in updating their HR record, as well as the catching up on mandatory training, first aid, CPR, police check, etc. The second game changer is CareHQ. CareHQ is the secret source that allows all these platforms to share information. Now we need to get a little tech here so that you can understand the full benefits of using one passport. I'm sure that some of you have heard of APIs while others have not. Essentially, an API is a connection method for sharing data. The problem with APIs is that even though they are a vast improvement on what came before, they still do not offer true plug and play where you can remove a system, such as payroll, and just plug a new one in. That's because they talk directly to each other. They have to intimately know how the other platform works. Only then can they share information. The diagram on the left is an example of that approach. Each small circle around the outside is a system. HR, payroll, rostering, e-learning, client management, etc. Platforms are directly connected to the other platform or platforms they want to share information with. If you want to change one of your platforms, you need to get a new platform into your setup and get it to start mirroring the current setup such as the payroll rostering of sharing data. Once you have the mirroring perfectly over a few months, you can switch over the stream of information just to the new platform and remove the old platform. But it's a long and complicated process. The diagram on the right is CareHQ, the driver behind the one passport system. CareHQ still uses API connectors, but works as an event organizer. Rather than each platform having to intimately connect directly to other platforms, they only need one connection to the central event system. When an event happens, such as an employee receiving a promotion, the HR system will send that information to the central event system and each platform gets the update. If the update is relevant to them, they perform a task. If the update has nothing to do with them, they ignore it. As no two platforms are directly linked, it makes updating your technology system much easier. Rather than ta taking on updating the entire setup in one go, you can work through the platforms one by one, much less impact on your day-to-day -day operations. Especially in these days of age groups acquiring other groups, the KHQ system allows you to easily connect the IT setup of the new system to your existing IT infrastructure. For example, they might have a different HR system, but you're gonna to need to use it for the next six months as changing it is not a priority. But you do wanna move them onto the payroll system in your group centralized payroll department. Easy to do. From a recruitment perspective, here's how KHQ is a game changer. In this scenario, a candidate has accepted an offer of employment. Now you need to onboard them. 
as part of the acceptance of employment step, the connection in one passport between the candidate and their new employer was created. This not only ticks the privacy box between these two parties, but also allows CareHQ system to import the one passport record into the new employer system. So the recruitment system sends the information from the one passport to the central event system. The central system tells everyone that an event has occurred, the hiring of a new employee. But they will say that everyone ignores the event except for the HR system. The HR system grabs the individual details about that new employee and creates the HR record with it. The HR system then sends out an event that this new person is set up in the HR system. That triggers a flurry of activity as that event triggers the person to be set up in the payroll system and added to the roster, as well as having an individual login for the client management system created for them. All of this is done automatically and in real time. Talk about speeding up the process. The final piece is Marketplace. We've been busily connecting with a wide range of technology providers, especially in the workplace workforce management space. We provide them with the API key to connect to the Care Hedge system. So instead of them having to build connectors to dozens of other platforms, they just build one. The aim is that if you already have a lot of workforce management technology, you don't need to change in order to use one password. The aim is that our technology can connect to your current systems. If you don't currently have much technology in place, the marketplace is a good place for you to start looking at your options, the HR, payroll, rostering, recruitment, e-learning, etc. Now let's look at those four steps again. Let's add in an applicant tracking system from the marketplace. We work with a few providers from a free version to quite expensive. Obviously the functionality and connectivity increases with price. But the core advantages don't change. All applications come into a central repository, easily accessible by all parties within the recruitment process and not clogging up one person's inbox. Shortlisting becomes easier and faster, easy to keyword search the results, easy to tag people who want to keep their details, but they're not suitable this time. Easy to add steps into the process to assist the shortlisting. You might want to add in a psychometric test or perhaps get them to do a video interview before deciding who comes in for a face-to-face -face interview. Making sure it is really easy for the highest quality candidates that get face-to-face -face time with a manager because it's the most expensive step in the process. The interviewer now has a more complete picture of the candidate. Verified information from one passport. Potentially results from psychometric testing or, view or video interviews. As soon as the candidate accepts the job offer, the employer can import their one password, automatically setting up their HR record. The new employer sees the status of the new employee for the various onboarding steps. Do they have a police check? How old is it? Have they completed any of the standard industry training? Do they have the current first aid and CPR stimulus? Having access to the, to the real-time status of these requirements, the employee can act accordingly, either arranging for all of them to be completed or ticking off the ones that the new employee has already completed recently for another employer, as they have the actual evidence. Either way, it speeds up the process for the new employee to commence work and lowers turnover of new recruits. And overall, it stays true to the three aims of wanting to save time, lower costs, and lower risk. The one password system is live, and there are a few thousand workers in the system already. I hope that I've covered everything so that you can see where workforce management technology is going. As you can see, it's not only about functionality, the real game changer on so many levels is connectivity. If your technology platforms cannot easily share information, 
go back and ask your vendors why not. If they don't have a satisfactory answer, start looking for other options. The advantages in time and cost saving, as well as lowered risk, are just too big to ignore. I'll send a link to the presentation to anyone, everyone who's on the webinar today. Are there any questions? How do we get workers to use one password? Okay, so one password we set up in connection with your HR system. So the workers get an email from you, you know, from their employer saying, please click here to set up your one password employee kiosk. Uh, so it's just like a, an employee kiosk on steroids. Uh, there's a dashboard you can send through annual leave requests, back data payslip access, all those kind of things through the same one password system. Uh, but you're not the only provider <clears throat> asking them to set that up. So gradually I see that it can actually connect to, to various people. Um, if there's no other questions, I'd like to make a, a webinar offer. Because I think everyone, obviously this is a topic that interests everyone who's joined us today. I'd like to make an offer of a free trial of the Care HQ system, including one password. Now, what does that include? Setting up the one password for all staff, connecting your HR system to Care HQ so you can share the data. If you don't have a HR platform now, if you're just uh, using, say, something in the payroll system, we have a, an intuitive cloud based HR system we can plug in for you to use as well. And we'll create an executed blueprint for automating information sharing around there, see how else we can save the money. Now, we have some providers who've already taken up a three month trial. That means they don't have the usual uh, setup fee of $500 per facility and an average of $6 per worker per month. On top of that, they're saving a minimum of about $1,500 per month by automating a wide variety of daily transactions. I'd really like you to trial the platform, so I want to up the offer. I'm prepared to offer six months free trial to any organisation on this webinar. That doubles the time frame for everything. All you need to do is contact ACDN in, in the next week. So until close of business, Wednesday, 10th of September. You have nothing to lose, lots to gain. Thanks for joining us. Uh, please contact ACDN if you like more information about One Passport and KHQ, uh, especially when I do a trial. And if you contact us within the next seven days, uh, we'll double the trial from three months to six months. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us.